Uh, I would say that the food and beverage industry, um, beyond uh, keeping up production and beyond making sure that um, you know their employees and their teams are safe, the number one lesson that we learned from the last financial crisis, which uh, was not an epidemic, right? But the number one lesson we learned from that is that companies can't stop innovating. It was when uh, R&D budgets were shrunk and uh, innovation projects were canceled that gave rise to the opportunity for many of the competitors that we see today. And so the innovation cycle, because it's such a long cycle, uh, means that you don't really know what economic uh, situation or what market opportunity you're going to be launching into um, you know, a year or two years down the line. And so when companies think about uh, agility, when they think about um, rapid prototyping and iteration and innovation, usually those things are uh, praised as targets or as achievements, um, capabilities that companies want to enable internally. But what we're seeing now is that traditional consumer testing is unavailable uh, anywhere that the pandemic is prevalent and in any places that are uh, attempting to, to flatten their own curve or to, or to prevent uh, the pandemic from uh, arriving. And so companies are now looking for alternative ways in, in order to keep the innovation cycle alive without relying on consumer testing. The number one change in disruption is that no one can hold CLTs or consumer testings or any type of panel gatherings. And so we've seen some companies adapt through uh, various forms of at-home use uh, by sending prototype products to um, employees at their own homes for them to taste. Uh, and then we've seen companies relying on technology to rise to the occasion. Um, the use of models and AI in order to model and predict for perceptions and preferences around the world is a new tool in the toolbox that was being uh, utilized and deployed before this crisis and is being accelerated because of this crisis. And so when we think about um, how much disruption has happened today, it is still less disruption than it has happened historically. And all of that has been enabled because of the, the modern advent of digital technologies uh, and applications such as Slack and Zoom, uh, and in the case of the food and beverage industry, uh, even the use of AI for, for modeling perception and preferences. Over the last 10 years, we've collected the largest uh, sensory data set of perception and preference of on-market products of any company in the world. Um, we've spent 10 years running our own large-scale R&D of uh, consumer panels and preference panels for uh, every category of available on-market products. And we have now done that in over 15 countries and over 30 different regions uh, around the world, giving us access to, to uh, a massive data set of perceptions and preferences available globally. In normal times, the, the value of AI for predicting consumer perception and preferences is the ability to develop products anywhere and predict how they'll perform with any target market or demographic without requiring a, uh, a stratified random sampling from a consumer test or from a uh, central location test uh, from the target demographic. And so what we do in normal times is we help companies accelerate their product development cycle we give them targeted directions for innovations, and we can predict for optimal targets so that they have greater assurance that those products will be successful. Uh, in today's, uh, during this COVID crisis, which will at last for an unknown duration, obviously you cannot get consumer feedback on your products. You can't hold CLTs, you can't gather individuals for consumer testing. And so the use case of our technology, the value proposition of our technology is actually the same, is that if we can find uh, three to five employees in your company who can taste the products uh, siloed independently, preferably at home, uh, then we can take that information and we can translate and predict what any other consumer demographic or consumer cohort will taste around the world. 
uh, and it will tell them how that product will perform. And so you can actually keep the innovation cycle moving forward, potentially not at the same speed, um, but faster than you could do without direction and feedback um, through your normal process. They say that the, the best companies uh, are forged in a downturn that uh, this this is a saying in the tech industry but that the best companies are started founded uh in a downturn and it's because they build on that resiliency and they build on um the 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 moment in time when when we say a rising tide raises all ships right and you don't know who's uh who's not wearing pants until the tide goes out uh, I think that in this new environment, in uh, a contempor con contemporaneous with COVID world and the post-COVID world, we're going to see that the companies that uh, rose to the occasion, both in what they did for their employees, what they did for their communities, uh, and what they were able to achieve going forward, uh, are the companies that have, some, have set themselves up for success in the long run.